You must pay more, but it's easy. Sleeping and waking warm in the sheets. The familiar body beside you like a favorite teddy bear. Warm morning hunger, honey in the sack. The roundhouse in winter is quiet, an ashram of orchids and Japanese music. You have come to this place together after a long climb. When the fire needs tending, the two of you poke at it till one adds the new wood. And here's the last one. Um, I live on Capitol Hill, and I work at the Library of Congress, so I have only five blocks to walk to work. And the grandfather of American poetry, Walt Whitman, lived in Washington for about 10 years during the Civil War. And he tended um, wounded soldiers in what I think is now the Air and Space Museum, but there was a hospital. And also, uh, he, he worked, I think, in what's the portrait gallery. Anyway, he was around on the hill. So this poem mentions him toward the end. Where I live, the sidewalks are brick, and they get uneven very quickly because the trees, you know, the roots reach out, and the sidewalks get all humpy and lumpy. Washington Days, D-A-Y-S. <laughs> this morning, standing on the sweet spot near the Capitol where tourists like to stand, I watched workmen heft bollard post into deep cement pits. On this same spot, you too may stand, deterred by the barriers today being placed. I imagine you, visitor or friend, walking ahead of me in your future clothes. You will not know the capital we have known, nor the area generations before us knew. When the grounds were open and citizens could drive up to the steps, or even earlier, when horses were tied to wrought iron hitching posts, later converted to park benches. But if you have already visited, you may know me as the stranger in your family album, the blurred figure passing through as you snapped a Washington memory. For I was born here, took first steps holding my parents' hands on Pennsylvania Avenue, the southeast side away from the residence of power. But now, if you ask directions, I'll give them. If requested, I'll hold your camera, open the quick lens, and capture you with the dome, its statue of freedom, in the background. Just this morning, visitor, I heard, as you will hear, birdsong and twitter, the scattering under feet of squirrels scampering aloft at my approach, the caw cry of crows in the distance. And today, a cab driver may tell you old stories of neighborhoods when doors were left open, cars unlocked, and about Capitol Hill on hottest evenings when children in nightgowns sometimes slept under low branches on the soft Capitol grass. Recently, too, we could walk on the front porch of the Capitol and look out over the mall. Just a decade ago, on the day of the Million Man March, I was able to look out from a small window in the Capitol at the sea of faces full of passion, brotherhood, and the deep urge to do good. This morning, as usual, dawn runners hurry past, while others dressed for work speak brightly into cell phones to no one nearby. Thriving and busy, the city forms itself around jersey barriers, metal checkpoints, though still over there you may see the Potomac's mild ripples where swimmers once splashed, men fished, or others hunted its banks. Have you sculled the Potomac or paddle-boated the tidal basin? Like you, I have walked under cherry blossoms in April 
just recently. Cherry blossoms sprouting from tree trunks as easily as from branches and looked at the pink tinged blossoms damp after showers glistening against rain blackened bark. Shh, do I have your confidence? Come here. There is still magic on this spot. And though the city can be cutthroat in its clubs and drug dens and neighborhoods overrun and pulled down, on any street near the Capitol, when the honks and shouts die down and congressmen leave for the weekend, you can hear the soft scuff of your shoe soles on the sidewalk, and the city becomes a simple hometown. Staffers and youngsters come back. A mother pauses to sit on a bench, lift her blouse, and nurse the new infant. Its small hand, only a tenth size of yours. While down the street, grandmothers pad in slippers to pick up their newspapers. By now, a line has formed at the coffee shop where a Hispanic father continues to hold his own against the day-to-day -day forces that at times would bring him down. And on any given weekend, while the media and cranes doze, when you pass neighbors on the cobblestone walk, look down at the contours of tree roots buckling the brick path and remember the poet who walked here during the Civil War and who tended wounded soldiers on the mall. Walk farther from the hill past the halfway house where small miracles still occur, each time a life that has died to the root sprouts again past lethal cravings. Then you will know that freedom can return. It is possible to step across rivers of fear and with feet wet and soiled, find the way, even as we construct barriers that hide from us the knowledge that once this city was open and can be again. Thank you.